All right, I'm gonna go ahead and give an introduction. Good afternoon, everyone. So we have a really close friend of Petra as our special guest today, Mr. Denny Corby. We met Denny as a team at a conference a few years ago, and it was instant sparks, no pun intended. Um, we managed to get him to sit and perform tricks for us for like two hours sitting in the lobby. No joke, we would not let him leave. The team loved him, um, and he's been partnering with us ever since. So welcome back, Denny. Pumped to have you. Oh, I'm um, so excited Denny, to be here. Denny is a successful magician, entertainer, keynote speaker. He performs regularly for several corporate clients, including Comcast, BMW, Tyson. Although his shows range from an infinite, intimate office setting to crowds of 2,500 and everything in between, and virtual. <laughs> Um, and through appearances on major cable networks like Fox and NBC, then he's also graced screens across the country. Um, he's put out a DVD called Magic Tricks Now, sharing some of his favorite tricks that'll impress your friends, family, coworkers, strangers. In our case, the first time it was definitely strangers. Um, and the session today, Denny's gonna be talking about the magic of asking questions, how magicians prepare, how we're all magicians in our respective businesses, and how to create a magic experience for your customers, all while we get a full magic show. So everyone sit back, enjoy, engage. Um, and without further ado, I'm gonna let Denny take it away. Sweet, wow, thank you so much, that was amazing. Thank you all so much for joining us here on Zoom and Facebook Live. It is great to be here. I love working and doing anything with Petra and any friend of Petra is a friend of mine. Uh, like she said, my name is Denny Corby and I travel the world doing an interactive comedy magic show primarily in the uh, corporate world. Uh, with that, I kind of came from the corporate world also. So I am born, raised and still live right outside Scranton, Pennsylvania. Uh, so if anybody here watches the TV show, The Office, uh, it's based off a paper supply company in Scranton. And this is a thousand percent true story. Uh, my family actually owns the paper supply company in Scranton. And now I do this for a living. So they're very thrilled. Uh, but no, so, uh, you know, my dad actually happily tells people his son turns tricks for a living. So that's a plus. Uh, but, you know, for years, I thought I was going to run the family business. Uh, my dad is a serial entrepreneur, has a bunch of employees. And for years, I thought I was going to do that. But I always had this love and passion for magic. And uh, I have really cool parents. So when I was 25, I was working for them. And they're like, listen, we know you don't love this. Why don't you try the magic full time? You can always come back and do this. Uh, you know, we'll always have something for you to do here. But, you know, go and try this. Now, seven years later, uh, I travel the world getting to make people laugh and smile, which is my absolute dream. Uh, and through traveling and doing shows and everything, I've learned uh, kind of working with different groups and organizations, doing workshops, kind of showing people how we're all magicians. So today, uh, we're going to do some really cool magic. I'm going to show you some stuff. But more importantly, I'm going to teach you and show you how some of these routines are actually done. So not only are you going to watch some magic, you're also going to learn some magic. And some of this stuff you can do right at your homes, right in your office wherever you're at, you can learn right now. And some things will take a little bit of practice, but most of them are pretty easy, but things that you can do. I didn't want to give you super hard stuff to do. Uh, we're going to be going over three ideas and concepts and each one we're going to do a magic trick with, and I will teach you that magic trick also. So I thought before I talk anymore, we'll do a quick little observation test to make sure everybody's paying attention. So I'm going to show you all some cards, uh, specifically these ones. And I want you to memorize as many details about these cards as you can in five seconds. Give me five seconds, memorize as many details about these cards as you can, and we'll take it from there. So let's see, that is five, let's get the zoom, there we go, focus, five, four, three, two, and one. Question number one, how many cards were there? If you said five, there's exactly five, the questions will get more difficult as we go on. Next question is, what was the bottom card? If you said blank, it's actually the ace of spades. A lot of people miss it, there's a ton of white space on it, I put it on the bottom, Totally my fault. Next question is, what color were the backs? Right, if you said blue, they're actually red. And last question is, what were the other four cards? If you said blank, I think you missed the royal flush. So it's a quick little observation test to get started. Hopefully nobody passed that test, because if you did, you can have my job. But, so I just wanted to do that, make sure you guys know I'm like not just full of it, I actually do have a little bit of entertainment value. Uh, but I wanna talk about today how we're all magicians. Because magic is just basically a secret that you don't know. Magic is basically something that you don't understand. Uh, a question that you don't know the answer to. And to me, when we work with different businesses and organizations, we're all creating that magical experience for them. Uh, because really when it breaks down, especially now in a very digital world, it is all about that customer service, that relationship, that experience that all of your 
people get. Um, and to me, that breaks up into three different ones. There's kind of like the pre-show experience, like kind of how they see you before the event or before the product. And they have the actual experience for the product. And then they actually have the post-show experience, right? What are they feeling after? So today, um, we're going to talk a little bit about that. We're going to learn some really cool magic. To me, what I want to talk about today, one of the most important things is getting help from others. Uh, I know it's a very common thing to say, but more importantly, more specifically, getting help from people outside of your industry. Because uh, especially with magic, I love asking people in other organizations, other different verticals, niches, uh, just different businesses, different worlds, hey, what do you think of this? Or just learning about their properties, learning about their things. Because uh, magic, like I said, is about uh, knowing something that somebody else doesn't know. And a lot of things that magicians do is utilizing different things and properties that a lot of people don't know can happen. Uh, you'll see that in a second. I'll show you some really cool stuff with some everyday objects that you didn't think would work in the way that they did. So one of the first things I want to talk about is, like I said, is the magic of asking questions. If you just ask yourself how or how can this be done, you know, you can come up with some creative ideas. You can talk to the people in your companies, in your organizations, and you'll get some cool ideas and some cool things, uh, some problems you're having. Hey, how do I solve this? But what's neat is if you ask people in completely different industries, completely different worlds, hey, I have this problem. How would you solve it? Because every industry, every group solves things a different way. They all have different uh, softwares, different programs, different products. And uh, especially with magic, you know, we get to find out different properties that other objects might have that people might not know about. Uh, so when you see me doing all of this stuff, before I teach you, I want you to think, how would I do this? How is this possible? Uh, if you ever, ever do see a magician out and about, please enjoy the show. Uh, but think, hey, realistically, if I was up there, how would I make this happen? And whether it's right or wrong, whether you are right or wrong, it doesn't matter. I just think it's fun to get the juices flowing. So uh, we have a couple of different camera angles, as you'll see. Actually, let's get started with another um, interactive trick. We're gonna do a very interactive trick. I'm gonna move over here and I'm gonna bring some pool balls up on the screen. I'm gonna bring some pool balls up on the screen. Here they are right there. So we have a bunch of different pool balls. I want everybody to take your finger and put it on a white cue ball. Everyone take your finger, put it on a white cue ball, because that's where we start playing pool. You gotta break the balls. I don't know if that's a good thing to say, but uh, <laughs> you are gonna take your finger, put it on one of the white cue balls. Great. Now you're going to take your finger and move to the nearest and closest black eight ball. Take your finger, move to the nearest or closest black eight ball. Awesome. Next. You're going to take your finger and you're going to move to the nearest or closest green six ball. Take your finger, move to the nearest green six ball. Perfect. And finally, move to the nearest or closest yellow number one ball. So move everybody right now should be on a yellow number one ball. And I'm going to try to reach through the interwebs to all of us here today and try to see which ball you have your finger on. Let's do it. Here we go. I think it is right there. All right, let's get rid of those. If I got that correct, please drop a like in the comments, like on the video, give us a thumbs up so we all know it works for you. Awesome. So right now I'm gonna show you something and I want you to think, how would you do this? And I'll explain after, I'll give you a second, but I just want you to think, hey, if it was me, how would I do this? So let's go right here. Uh, we have an envelope. I'm actually gonna come down to the close-up camera, which is right here. Here we go. So down here, I moved the keyboard out of the way. I have an envelope. Inside the envelope, I have some playing cards. I have the Ace of Clubs, the Ace of Hearts, and the Ace of Diamonds. Uh, actually, can I get one person to uh, name one of these cards for me? So maybe we can pull somebody up. Uh, just Who have wants somebody to volunteer. Oh, actually, if, if you can just help us, um, it'll be probably super oh, easy and okay. quick. Um, so uh, very important. People don't know that we didn't discuss or prearrange any, anything before this, correct? Absolutely not. Cool. So we have the Ace of Clubs, the Ace of Hearts, and the Ace of Diamonds. Would you please pick one of those cards? Ace of Hearts. The Ace of Hearts. Are you sure? I'm sure. That's my pick. That's your pick. That's amazing because I knew you were going to pick the Ace of Hearts. How do you know that? See, because uh, we have the envelope, and inside the envelope is one piece of paper and one piece of paper only. And on that piece of paper says, you will choose the ace of hearts. <gasps> crazy, I know. So Very everybody, crazy. <laughs> everybody right now on the call, I want you to think just for a minute, take 10 seconds. If you were in my position, how would you do that? 
Think about it for a second. All right, now I'm going to explain to you how this works. And all of you can do this at home, pretty much if you have a deck of cards and an envelope, that's all you need. So I will come down here and I'll show you how this works. So this is what we call in the magic business, multiple outs, multiple outs. And what that means is there's three different ways this trick can end, but I don't know and the audience doesn't know how it's going to end until somebody picks a card. So let's pretend uh, she didn't pick the Ace of Hearts. This is gonna go back in my envelope here. Now let's just say she would have picked the Ace of Clubs. I would have said the exact same thing. That's so cool. I knew you were gonna pick the Ace of Clubs. And I say that because it's a funny thing because everyone goes, oh yeah, because you knew. But if she would have said the Ace of Clubs, I wouldn't have said anything or mentioned the inside of the envelope. I would have mentioned nothing about it, would have said nothing. But if I would have turned over the envelope, I wrote, you will choose the Ace of Clubs. See, these are called multiple outs, right? There's multiple ways this trick can end. Now, so that's one way. This is the second way. Now, what if would have picked the Ace of Diamonds? What if she would have picked the Ace of Diamonds? I would have said the exact same thing. That's amazing. I knew you would pick the Ace of Diamonds. Wait for that kind of giggle, that laugh. And I would not mention the envelope at all. I wouldn't mention the envelope, wouldn't mention anything on the back, <clears throat> wouldn't mention anything inside. Instead, I would have said, that's amazing. Cause you see these three cards, that one has nothing on the back. This one has nothing on the back. And on the back of this one says, you will choose this card. So you can see here with these multiple outs, there's three different ways that you can accomplish the same trick. But what's neat is the audience doesn't know how the trick's gonna end. So no matter what, this is an amazing effect. Now, some of you are thinking, oh, that, that's easy. It's not gonna fool anybody. It fooled you, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's just all about the presentation. Now, before I go on, I will say, I, this is a, if you guys wanna play along, this might be kind of fun, uh, email me just so I can see how you're thinking or find me on social media, email is denny at dennycorby.com, website's Denny Corby, Instagram at Denny Corby, Facebook, Denny Corby, uh, Twitter at Denny Corby, we're never on there. So what I want you to think about is I want you to think about, so when I do this, I actually do this with five cards. I want you to think, how can you do this with two more cards, right? If you were to have two more cards, what are two different ways that you can reveal two more cards using some playing cards and envelope. You can use different objects, you can use different things. Uh, if you contact me, I will show you some different ways to do it. Uh, or I, I'm really interested to hear how you would do it because there's so many different things. There's different objects you can use to bring into play. Uh, I won't say too much, but use your brains and think about how we can take this to the next level. And what's neat actually is, because um, this is like an easy trick, which is also a very fun and cool trick. Uh, I recommend you try this and you show somebody else and then ask them how they think it's done. Just to see, to me, it's really just cool to think, how do other people think? How do they solve problems, right? Because like I said, that's all magic is, just a problem that you can't solve. So think about that, see, uh, let me know how you would do two more cards. Uh, and what's actually neat is you don't have to use just playing cards. Think about that for a second, right? So you can use uh, different pieces of paper with different names, um, different company, right? There's so many different things. I don't wanna give you guys too much, but I want you to think, hey, this is kind of neat. How can I take this to the next level? Now, same thing with asking questions. I'm gonna show you all another card trick um, because to me, this is fun. And I just don't want you to sit here and just hear me talk. I wanna teach you some cool magic tricks too because I think it's important for all of us just to learn a simple magic trick or two because magic's a really cool universal language, meaning, um, you can show somebody some magic, they don't have to speak the same language. And it just helps kind of break that barrier, breaks the ice. And plus, I think we've all been in a situation where you know, we could have done a cool magic trick, whether it's out to lunch, dinner, all that fun stuff. So I'm gonna show you all another card trick uh, that you can do. So what you're going to need is a deck of cards. Obviously, uh, just a normal deck doesn't matter uh, as long as all the cards are here. Now, what you're going to do is uh, I'm gonna take the eight and the nine, or take the black eight and nine. Now, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna take one of those cards I'm gonna put it in one part of the pack. I'm gonna take another one of the cards, put it in another part of the pack. Now check this out, no funny moves, no sleight of hand. They're gonna clearly get pushed in, not holding anything. There's no gaps, there's no breaks. Now watch, I'm gonna find both cards at the same time. Watch this, on the count of three. One, two, three. And you'll see right here in my hand, I have two cards, the black eight and nine. Now think about that for a moment. Think about how this, how this might work. How would you do this? 
How do you think I did it? I'll give you a second just to think about it. Cool. Now I'm going to explain how it's done. Now, this is a really cool trick. Like I said, if you have a deck of cards, you can do this and amaze anybody almost immediately. Um, now, this is a really cool idea. I'll bring you back down here. Um, this is a really neat idea. Uh, and it's actually very fascinating if you really think about it. Uh, how this works is these two cards are not the two same cards I showed you in the beginning. I know, I cheat, it's crazy. So what you're gonna do is if you have a deck of cards, you can play along or I'll go through this quick and you can see. So what you need is the eight of spades and nine of clubs. And then you're also gonna get two cards, which are the nine of spades and the eight of clubs. So the two opposites. So we have the nine of clubs and eight of spades and we have the nine of spades and the eight of clubs. Now what happens is it's amazing how the brain works because uh, if we take one of those cards, the nine of clubs, for example, we just put it on top you take the ace of, or eight of spades and you put it on bottom, that's all you need to do. So you show these two cards and you say, here we have the black eight and nine. Now, if you remember, just like I said there, I don't really say what the cards are. I just show them kind of quick, say, hey, we have a black eight and nine. What we're going to do is we're gonna use these two cards and do a really cool magic trick. So I just kind of casually flash them. I never really leave them face up like this because I don't want people memorizing these suits. I don't want people memorizing the suit because later on, these are gonna be different. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna say, hey, we have a black eight and nine, check this out. We're gonna take one of those cards, put it into the middle, take another one of them and put it into the middle. Now you can even have them close up the cards. You can have them squeeze everything together. Now here's the move that you're gonna to have to practice a little bit. And what happens is now you have the eight on bottom and you have the nine on top. Now we have to get them to stay in this hand while the deck comes over here. So this is a really neat move. It's gonna take a little bit of practice, uh, but if you take your hand and you hold four fingers in the bottom and you have your thumb on top, and just hold a little bit of pressure. You don't wanna to squeeze too hard. You don't wanna to hold too light. But if you have to, just a little bit of pressure up and down and you just toss those cards, the top and bottom card are gonna stay in your hand. But when you do it at full speed like this, it looks really impressive. And then you show, boom, the black eight and nine. And once again, you don't, tell, you know, you don't specifically say, oh, the nine of clubs and eight of spades. Uh, now, here's what you're going to do. You could do it hand to hand. So for example, with this move uh, to practice, if you want to go like this up and down, I'll come up here so you can see it. So if you want to come here, boom, you can go down and practice. Uh, I like going side to side. I like going this way, especially on a table, because people, uh, the people follow the motion meaning if there's movement anywhere, the eyes will follow the movement. So what's neat with this is when you do this live, it's a little hard on camera because the camera doesn't blink. In real life, people blink and there's movement. But what's neat is you throw those cards. Everyone's going to watch those cards fall over. And then you're going to go over here and say, no, they're here. And they're going to look over, see two cards in your hand and go, come on, that can't be. And that's when you show the eight and the nine. So it's really amazing how magic and magicians kind of use our uh, brain psychology and just how our brains think to achieve a result. So like I said, think about that. Think about different ways to do it. Maybe you can use different cards also. You don't have to use the eight and the nine. Uh, I have friends who do this and they use uh, sixes and nines, right? Six of diamonds, nine of hearts, uh, nine of di or nine of, six of hearts, nine of diamonds. They use the opposites. Uh, so there's different ways to do it. And there's, this, is, this method is actually used a lot in magic and other stuff, but it's hidden in ways that you would never notice. Really, really neat, really, really fascinating. So we talked about the magic of asking questions, right? Getting advice from other people. Uh, and same with this trick, uh, practice it, do it. And it sounds really bad, but even if you do this bad, it's still actually a really cool trick. Same thing, because what I'm showing you, they're really cool tricks. They're not like jaw-dropping, show-stopping miracles, but they're really cool magic tricks. And I think it's neat just to see how people think. So if you're gonna do one of these, ask somebody, how do you think I did that? How do you think that works? Hey, if you were to do this, how would you do it? If they get it right, no big deal, right? Magic's not real. But it's interesting just to see how people think and learn how people think. And maybe it might be neat to try different industries and see maybe how different people's thought processes come about. Uh, like I know, for example, I apologize if, if there's any engineers on here. Y'all are the worst. I hate performing for engineers. And I'll flat out say it at the beginning of, of my shows. Like, yo, you, you guys are the worst. They're great, but they're the worst because uh, they don't react the same way. Meaning if I do a magic trick, they're about <laughs> one to five seconds behind because they're trying to figure it out. So they'll see a trick, they'll, they'll watch it, it'll be finished and they'll go, 
Okay, all right, that was pretty good because they're trying to figure out how to do it. So the next thing I wanna talk about is playing and exploring. Playing and exploring, uh, that's huge in magic because we're also gonna go back to the beginning which is asking questions, right? Getting people's different inputs from different industries because uh, playing and exploring now comes right after that. Because if you find something, a different idea, a different property, how things work, now you start to play, you get to have fun. Magic, a lot of it is just playing. Uh, and we can do this in all industries. It's okay to play and have fun. Uh, meaning, you know, I will sit here and just shuffle and play with a deck of cards, right? I'll shuffle, play with a deck of cards. I'll do different moves. I'll read some books. Oh, why is that one face up? Oh, there's a couple face up. We'll fix those quick. But you can see here, uh, all you gotta do is just play a little bit because you just never know how you're gonna find things, right? Like I might keep practicing some, some other moves that uh, I haven't done in a while or just some new ones. And maybe I might just, instead of doing, uh, doing it this way, Maybe I'll uh, go like that. I'll just try different things. I'll just play because that's when you uh, figure things out. That's when you come up with new ideas, new different concepts, uh, especially when you start playing with everyday objects or just thinking in the everyday world. For example, I'm gonna show you something with a rubber band. Then I'm gonna show you something using a property of the rubber band that you probably never thought about using it in that way. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a rubber band. So I have a rubber band here. Actually, I'll use the yellow one, a little bit clear. There we go. So I have a yellow rubber band. You can see it's on my first two fingers and it's locked in, right? There's no way this is coming out. It's on these two fingers. Now watch, we're gonna close my fist. When I snap, the rubber band's gonna jump from these two fingers to these two fingers. Ready? One, two, three. You see they jumped to these two fingers. What? I know. So it doesn't come off the fingers, doesn't do anything, but watch, we're gonna do it again. This time they're gonna jump back to the original two. One, two, and three. And they jump to the other, back to the other two fingers. Now, I'm gonna show you how this works. If you, ha if you have a rubber band, play along. Uh, it's really fun, really easy. And this is a really cool trick. It's called the jumping bands. It's called the jumping band. So take the uh, first two fingers and put it on the rubber band. Actually, I'll, I'll show you first, I apologize. So what you're gonna do is all that happens is when I show the rubber band, and I bring my hand around in the back, excuse me, you guys don't see this. I'm showing you like behind the scenes. So when I show the rubber band and I come back this way, I put all of my fingers behind the rubber band. So from the backstage, not that good. From the front, stunning. No, uh, so now what happens is when you, if you have a rubber band and you're doing this, if you slowly open your fingers, you're gonna see the rubber band's properties does the work itself. Because what happens is because of the elasticity in the rubber, when you open up your fingers, the rubber band is basically just going up and around and doing this move. So it's using its properties, just going up and around and doing this move. But obviously people can't see that because you're gonna go quick. And with a snap, that makes it look really cool. That gives it that magic moment. So that's called the jumping bands. And what's neat is you can actually take this a step further. So I've actually done that for people and they go, oh, I know how that works. Like, do you? Okay, well, how about this? Because you can actually use two different rubber bands. So I have a blue one on the pinkies and the, uh, and the ring finger. I have a yellow one on the first two. And now same thing, these rubber bands are going to switch places. Watch, the blue's gonna go over here, yellow over here, boom. And they switched. And now that's the same exact method just a little bit harder. So what happens is behind the scenes, I do the same thing. I pull this rubber band back and I pull the other rubber band back. So I pull these two back and you'll see there's a middle overlap right here in the middle. You're gonna open that up and put your fingers in. <laughs> Don't do that. Uh, so this is a little loose rubber band. So it actually looks very confusing, but what's gonna happen is the rubber bands are just gonna do the same thing. They're just gonna bypass each other. So really slow. Let me get the focus there. There we go. You'll see they just switch just like that. So you're using the properties of a rubber band in a really different way. Now here's a really cool different way to do it. Let's say you're doing this trick or let's say someone just has a broken rubber band. Break that. There we go. You have a broken rubber band. You can still do some really cool stuff with this. So if you have a ring, if you have a paper clip, actually even if you have a rubber band, you put the rubber band inside the other. Now watch, let's get that focus. Here we go. Now watch as the rubber band is going to float up 
the paper clip or up the uh, other rubber band. Watch this. Notice the hands are not moving further apart. The hands don't move, but the rubber band floats and moves up the rubber band. Now, this is something really neat. Like I said, it's not a showstopper, but it's a really neat thing because uh, it might be a little hard to see on the camera, but in real life, you see that rubber band move, or you see that, ru that, that looped rubber band moving across the other rubber band. And like I said, you can do this with like a ring, you do it with a paper clip here. Actually, let's start with the paper clip. It might look a little bit better on the screen. So let's loop this paper clip in there. There we go. <clears throat> so you can see the paper clip there. Let's try to get that focus on the camera. There we go. Now ready to watch the paper clip. As it moves up. Now this is really neat. And it's just using the properties of the rubber band. So obviously, spoiler alert, uh, it doesn't actually float up the ring. And if you notice, I didn't have it go down. It actually went up. I didn't have my hand sideways. It went up the rubber band, which is actually more impressive. So how this works is we're just using the rubber band elasticity's uh, properties. So what happens is when you do this, you're going to take the rubber band and you're going to put most of the rubber band slack in your left hand. Put most of the slack right there in the left hand, but no one sees that. No one sees that because I put my thumb down here and then I stretch it out. So whenever I get my item that's ready, I take my other uh, rubber bands and I push, pull it through, and then I let it drop down to the bottom. I take my right hand and I put it up in the air a little bit. Actually, let me see if I can come down here. There we go. Might be a little bit easier to see. So now I stretch. I still have my extra piece down here. I put it here, I stretch it out. Now what happens is all you have to do is slowly release the extra rubber band in your hand and it's gonna look like it moves, but really the rubber band is just moving itself. It's using the elasticity to go up. So now I'll do it here. I'll do it from the back. Let's uh, get this camera again, be a little easier. So from the back, <laughs> don't mind my little cut, so from the back, I have all of my slack here in the hand. I have this pulled out. And you'll see as you watch, as the slack goes out, it makes the rubber band go up. It's okay if it jumps a little bit, your hand's a little clammy. Uh, then at the end, I kind of like to do, the, do, do that move, which kind of shows the hands are empty. There's nothing there. Obviously, don't do it if you have like a bunch of slack down there. It's not going to look good. Uh, but that's just using the properties of the magic of a rubber band. And that just came from playing. It's a very old idea, very old concept, but that just came from playing and toying around. Uh, think about maybe what industries you're in, what jobs you're in, uh, what products you're in. Hey, how else can you maybe use this? How is there another way to use this? How is there another industry who might be able to use this in a different way? Very interesting stuff. Think about that. Think about the product you have, whether it's a service, a SaaS, a physical product. Is there another way, another industry might be able to use this in the same, uh, in the same fashion or in a completely different idea? Think about it. If you can, maybe in the comments below, uh, put, hey, you know, I'm in this industry. I might be able to think about this other industry because I think our products might be compatible in a slightly different way. Uh, so, for example, I think uh, <laughs> I might be wrong, but I read somewhere, it could just be like magician stuff, but uh, <laughs> magicians are one of the uh, most, uh, uh, the best customers for Sharpie. Because uh, magicians always have people signing cards. I love Sharpies. I have a bunch. Uh, I heard somewhere that magicians are the number one um, consumers of Sharpies, which if you kind of think about it, it's probably something that they never thought about. Same with uh, the playing card company, the United States playing card company, people who make cards. Uh, magicians are actually one of their largest uh, customers because uh, people do custom cards now. Uh, different card designs are very popular, meaning uh, you know people can design their own backs and produce them. Uh, so it's really neat, especially on Kickstarter, which is actually really fascinating. Uh, people are coming up with their own designs for playing cards and put them up on Kickstarter, and people are helping make these 
playing cards a reality for other people. Uh, granted, uh, sleight of hand magic is obviously very popular, but if you look up something called cardistry, uh, it is actually, so here we go, same thing, um, using magic and objects in different ways, because you can use these to gamble cards, use them for magic tricks. And there's people who use these cards, uh, it's basically juggling for cards, but it's very, um, like ASMR, because there's people who are phenomenal at just moving packets of cards all around in really cool ways. Uh, that's something I never really got into. Uh, I can just do a couple of cool, really, th uh, really cool things, but there's people who can just manipulate cards in just the coolest ways and they flip them and turn them. Uh, and I would have never thought about that as something, but somebody, whether it was magic or a juggler or something else, saw these playing cards and go, huh, I'm not gonna use them for magic tricks. I'm not gonna use them for gambling or poker or anything else, but I think there's another way to use these. Uh, so really neat, if you're ever bored, it's called Cardistry, you just go on YouTube, uh, you, you'll get sucked down the YouTube hole very quick. Uh, and I apologize if I'm moving a little bit fast, I'm pretty much taking half day and full day uh, workshops and condensing them into uh, right around 45 minutes to an hour. So apologize if I'm going a little bit quick. So that is the magic of asking questions and playing and exploring just because you never know when you're going to find those little uh, nuggets or little ideas of different ways to do certain things with just playing with your products. Um, it's, it sounds so dumb, but there's nothing wrong with playing and just having fun. Whether you sell brooms, right? Just play with the broom, go in a room. What else can you do with the broom? Maybe not so much the broom, maybe it's the stick, maybe not the, the, the handle, maybe not the handle, maybe it's the bristles. Maybe it's the metal plastic piece that holds the bristles together. I don't know, uh, but that's how magicians actually come up with a lot of stuff is just playing and exploring with everyday objects and just seeing what else these properties can do. Like, oh, there's plastic on this, but there's a bit of metal. Can I do something with that piece of metal that people might not realize that there's a piece of metal in there? I don't know, I'm just making stuff. I don't know why I thought about brooms. Uh, I don't even have one in eyesight of me. But you know, it's just that little bit of thinking like, huh, I wonder. Uh, to me, I'm fascinated with, with other industries. Uh, and that's partly why I think I love performing in the corporate world also is I meet some of the strangest in performance, some of the strangest groups, things I never even thought of uh, were, were businesses. There was one, it was a, a SaaS, it was a software company, and their whole software is working with um, uh, production companies of clothing and different uh, apparel items, and they track all of their inventory. And it knows how much product a, uh, a large size takes versus small versus medium. And it uses an algorithm and knows based off inventory and orders how much product they need. And it tells them when to automatically order for it. To me, I, it's, it might be, you know, old hat to you guys. But to me, I'm like, I would have never thought about that. That's fascinating. So to me, in my head, I go, huh, there might be something neat with that software, maybe in a different magical theme. I'm not sure how, but that's actually really cool. Uh, I'm doing a conference uh, next month for the uh, Association of Weights and Measures. To me, it's not amazing right now, but I'm sure when I get there and I start talking to people, did my camera just go black? It did. Oh, no. Good thing it's a Sony. Go. All right, hold on, give me one second. <laughs> <laughs> oh no hold on hold on and okay give me one second this is the this is so embarrassing hold on i'm gonna just turn the camera on and off oh no this is like the second time this has ever happened to me <laughs> and uh, the I, audience wants to know if this is a magic trick is this part of a trick no i wish this is embarrassing i don't want this to oh no no okay here let's just do this all right can you see me <laughs> Okay, so yes. I'm just going to at least sit right here. Uh, I'll still keep trying this camera. I don't know what's going on with that. And it's one of my uh, more expensive ones too. So I apologize for that. But uh, let me, I'll, I'll figure it out at the end. Here, let me just put this up actually. Let's do this. We're doing it live. Ah, come on. Sorry, I have these uh, clips super, super tight. So they don't move. All right, there we go. All right, so not ideal. Let me, <laughs> this is so silly. All right, there we go. <laughs> We're doing it. We figured it out. It works. It works. It's, it's different camera. That was just, just weird. Uh, so apologize about that. Uh, perks of doing it live. Uh, this is the first time it ever happened. Second, or the other time it ever happened, I was actually doing a show. Computer just shut off. So could be so much worse. Hi, buddy. Sorry, dog's home. Uh, hey, you guys want to see my puppy? Here, come here, Bubba. This is uh, Big Meech. He is a one-year-old English bulldog. Hey, buddy. Hello. I know. Hello. I'm actually trying to figure out a way 
to um, actually trying to teach him magic to make him part of the show also because I think that's just super, super fun. So where were we? Uh, talking about magic, talking about, that just threw me off completely. Uh, but we're talking about asking questions, different products, different services. We're, I'm doing the weights and measures, which basically they are uh, helping the consumer um, make sure they're getting the proper uh, amount of product. So like when um, uh, someone buys like a bale of hay, uh, they make sure, uh, you know, the pound per barrel or pound per, what are they called? I don't even know. Uh, I was driving by a farm and I thought about that the, the other day. But uh, it's just using different things, just using different people's insights to see how that might be able to help yours. Now, one of the last things I want to talk about is preparation and practice. Preparation and practice, uh, which is very interesting. Practice is also very important, uh, but perfect practice, I could talk about that. It's a whole different thing, but practice and preparation. Uh, and the big thing for here, I think, is preparation. Uh, for me and my show, and I know a bunch of other friends, we overly prepare. And by that, that means we might have extra magic on us. We might have different things, almost like the uh, uh, choice, right? The three choice trick. Uh, we might have different things set up in the show that may or may not ever happen. And if it does, it's a miracle. And if not, it doesn't matter because the audience didn't know about it anyway. So I want you to think about a little bit here. Uh, how are there things that you can have pre-set up in your business? And how can you have something ready to really wow that customer and wow that client? Uh, there's a theory in magic called the ham sandwich theory. I know we keep things very intricate crazy names, but I like to keep it real, but it's called the ham, th ham sandwich theory. And the theory is this, magic is best done in organic situations that are brought up. Meaning, let's say we're all out, we're all having a good time, and uh, we're walking down the street. We're walking down the street and all of a sudden I went, boom, made a ham sandwich appear. Some of you might go, oh, that's amazing. Most of you'd be like, that was super random. But imagine we're all walking down the street and imagine somebody goes, man, I am starving. And you go, boom, ham sandwich. Whew, that's a miracle. Same trick, slightly different setup, whole different outcome. So I want you to think about today, what are some things in your business that you can have set up that if a client or somebody asks for it or needs it, boom, you're ready and you look like a rock star. Uh, and it doesn't matter if they use it or need it or not. To me, it's about doing those really cool things that make things seem organic and almost like you're not helping them, but you're uh, anticipating their needs without them knowing you're anticipating their needs. Super, super strange. Uh, because, you know, to me, it's, it's, it's those natural moments that make or break things. Uh, there's actually, uh, I can't do it here. I actually forgot to go set it up. Uh, one of my favorite things to do, and you, you can also do this, uh, takes a little bit of practice, uh, but every time I go to a restaurant, uh, more like the uh, diners that, that do this, but you know when they have the sugar packets on the table already? Uh, what I love to do is either take one of the packets, I'll palm it off, or nine times out of 10, someone's gonna leave to go to like the bathroom. And when they do that, I take one of the sugar packets, I take a fork and carefully on the back of one of the packets, not the whole way, I don't like snip or do anything, but I cut a hole, a little slit inside the, on the side of the packet. So from the one side, it still looks sealed. The other side, there's a little slight tear. I then take all that sugar and I pour it onto the floor. So the packet's empty. I then take and put that back into the little uh, holder. Now, I know for me, being a magician, sometimes people go like, oh, can you do something? And what happens is now, if you, so you might even say, hey, you want to see something neat I'm working on? Or, hey, you want to see something cool? For me, this is perfect for like different business meetings, client meetings. Uh, to me, anytime you can meet with a client, prospect, someone you're doing business with, have done business with, anytime you can just make that experience fun. Even if that's just something stupid, like you take them out to eat and you do a really neat magic trick. To me, that's just like all about the experience, I can't believe I'm still here. Let me back up. This is really close. There we go. Uh, well, I did it in the first place. Uh, but it's about creating those magical moments. So now back to the sugar packet. We're talking about preparation and practice. How far are you willing to go to make something happen? So with the sugar packet, uh, you take two of them. You take the one that's empty and the one in front of it that's full and you shake them because now people hear and see your shaken package. They can hear it. They, they, they know that movement. You go, oh, I picked up two. I then put back the full one and now I'm holding the empty one. And you are so far ahead of your audience, it's not even funny. And by 
far ahead means the packet's empty. The trick is done. Now it's all just presentation. So now I carefully rip off the sugar packet top. I then take and I hold my hand like this. I show my hand empty and I turn it towards me a little bit and I act like I'm pouring the sugar into my hand. And then when I start getting towards the end, I'll turn it sideways and just shake it a little bit more. And a couple pieces will fall out, excuse me, which gives a really good illusion of sugar going in. Now the trick is done. It's all acting. Now you say, watch this. And you can show the sugar is gone. Now, what happens if they didn't bring up magic? They're like, hey, they didn't ask for anything. Only thing that would have happened was nothing. And maybe the next person would have been like, why is the sugar packet empty with a hole in it? <laughs> but to me, that's really cool. There was a gentleman, uh, very famous over in Europe. His name was David Bergelis. David Bergelis. And he was known for pretty much doing things just like this. Um, I'm not gonna explain how a trick worked, but I will say, for example, like he would do things where he wouldn't even be asked to perform, but he would still spend almost hours and hours and hours setting things up in a venue just so if someone goes, can you do something, he's ready. I'll give a really quick 30,000 foot view. Uh, this gentleman was invited to a, uh, like a, a gala dinner, like you know, a fundraising dinner, not asked to perform, but he was just invited there as a guest. He was a guest there. Now there was, uh, there was a band, there was piano, chandeliers, really nice place. Now, what happened was they went, hey, can you, can you do something? Can you just do something for the whole crowd? <sighs> I don't know, maybe. So what happened was he goes, okay, I'm going to make the chandelier move. So he goes, boom, chandelier moves. He waves at it, it moves, and he goes, now. All of a sudden, the music that was playing stops. There was a piano player. The piano player stops. You look over, his piano is gone. You look over, his piano is gone, disappeared. So he made a chandelier move and made the piano disappear. Think about it. How would you do that? How would you do that? And the answer is probably exactly what you think. He had all of that ready and prepared just so if someone goes, hey, can you do a magic trick? Here's what he did. Short story long is he had a small piece of wi uh, 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 wire thread attached to the chandelier up over, hidden down into a corner of, of the room. So when he knew he was gonna do something, he had a pre-planned person who would then pull that string, which is then going to make the chandelier move. Then the piano player who was playing was actually playing a fake piano that was just like a cardboard box, whatever. It looked like a piano. He was playing behind it. People couldn't tell. Behind the curtain, behind him is where the real piano player was. So he was able to set all of this up. Granted, he was famous, but still, uh, when, when he was doing all this stuff, so people would help him out. But now think about this. So he did all of that, and he had a special staff ready. So if the moment came, he, they knew this was going to happen. He would go now, and the chandelier that he used was on the opposite side of the room that the piano player was. Genius. So he made the chandelier move. As he's doing all of this, no one's paying attention to the music, even though it's playing. What happens is then they put they, they dismantle the piano and walk it out of the room because it's all just boards. So these, you know, each person takes a board, walks it out, and then when he goes now, the piano player behind the scenes stops playing and the piano, the fake piano player falls off his chair as if it just disappeared. But the crazy part is, what if no one asked to see a magic trick or for him to do anything? Nothing would have happened. He would have just done nothing and all that setup would have been for nothing. But in the event like this, obviously he probably knew they were gonna ask, he has a miracle. He has an absolute miracle. So think about the preparation. What are some little things or even big things you can do that may or may not take a lot of time? Uh, to me, you know, the larger the client, the cooler the event, or sometimes just the most amazing trick, you'll go through whatever it takes to accomplish that. Uh, I have a friend who does a five minute routine. It takes him over two hours to set up for five minutes. Two hours for five minutes. Might even be like longer. But think about what are you willing to do to give your clients, to give your prospects, to give your people that really cool magical experience. 
I'm going to show you all one more really cool one that uses some preparation. And I'll explain where the preparation comes from and how you can also do this anytime. And all you need are two items. <laughs> Apologize if we're a little close here. I need a cup and some water. We well, usually take the water, you pour it into the cup. You do the magic move. Looks like this. And when you snap, you can get that water to turn into a piece of ice. What? All right, I'm gonna explain how to do this now. Uh, when I said you need two items, I lied. What, magician lied? Uh, you really need uh, four. You need a cup, some water, a piece of ice, and a sponge. I know I can't see you all. That's my favorite part is just watching grown adults go, you serious? Sponge got me, sponge. Uh, so here's what you do is uh, put my piece of ice off to the side. You're gonna take a sponge like this. It's gonna be like obviously a normal square sponge or rectangle. You're gonna put it on top of the cup you're going to use. Uh, and so in this case, I cut mine out. But you're gonna cut a circle around the top of the cup so it looks like this. And then you're gonna take that uh, circle piece of sponge and you're gonna push it all the way down to the bottom. And that's it. Uh, now, I know this cup, this is like weird details about sponges I never thought I would have to care or know about, uh, but make sure your sponge is a little bit bigger than the actual cup itself, because you want it to sit down there really, really, really nice and snug. Sorry, I still keep looking at my teleprompter thinking that camera's working. Uh, so that's all you have to do, and you are set up for an absolute miracle. Because remember, all of this stuff, even though I'm teaching you it and it's easy, think about how you responded to that. Think about that, pe that moment of wonder going, wait, what? So here's a really cool property, a cup and a sponge to make a miracle. So if you think about it, water to ice, it's almost impossible. So what you do is you have your piece of sponge. When you're doing this, if you do it, um, make sure your sponge is damp. And by that damp, just run it underwater, squeeze it out. So it just has like some elastic, not elasticity, but some sponginess to it. If you use a dry sponge, a piece of ice will stick and you have just the dis disappearing water. So what you do is you take your piece of ice, mine are starting to melt. Uh, so I took them out an hour ago. Took, you take your piece of ice, you put it into the cup, you're ready to rock and roll. Only thing you have to practice is how much water you can and can't pour in. I'm sorry I'm going into way too much detail about sponges, but this is stuff I just learned over time. And that's the cool thing is it might not start off normal, whatever you're doing, whatever idea, but as you keep doing it, you keep doing little edits, you keep trying and doing different things and you learn a lot about one thing. I know too much about rubber bands, sponges, and the most random objects but it helps me in my business and it helps my clients. So your sponge goes down there, your piece of ice. All you gotta do is pour in the water, pour in less is more. And by that, if you pour in too much water, the sponge can't absorb it all. So when you go to dump out the uh, piece of ice, a whole bunch of water falls out and then people go, oh, that's how the trick worked. You just dumped out the ice, which is not how it's done. Uh, obviously the sponge absorbs it. So you wanna pour in just a, little, a decent amount of water to where it'd be, it'd be amazing when it disappeared. And then your piece of ice comes out. Now, here's two cool things. Actually, one, I want you to think about. What else can you use? What other objects can you use? What other liquids? Right? You don't have to use just normal water in an ice cube. Uh, for example, I did this for a friend of mine. He loved orange soda. He was like, Kel, who loves orange soda? I do. No, he loved orange soda. So what I did one day is I knew he would come over, either I would have orange soda for him or he would just bring like a, a small, small bottle, loved it. So I made orange soda ice cubes. You can see where, where, where this is going. Now, same thing. I knew every time he came over, it weren't, we, he wouldn't come over every day, every week, but every couple of weeks we'd come hang out, have some bourbon, whatever. And most of the time he'll be like, hey, what are you working on? Doing anything cool? And I'll sh maybe show him some stuff. Sometimes I will, sometimes I won't. Uh, but this time he goes, hey, can you show me something? And I was like, sure. So I went, uh, we were downstairs. I went upstairs. I got uh, my cup and an ice cube. And obviously it was an orange soda ice cube. And I said, all right, um, uh, can I borrow your orange soda? So I take some of his orange soda. I pour it in and snap. And an orange soda ice cube came out. The kid went bonkers. Because it's different. I used his objects. I took that little bit extra time, a little bit of an extra step to make this more customized and important to him. So you don't have to use uh, water. You can use orange soda, lemonade. You can use all these different liquids. Uh, obviously you just can't use booze because it won't freeze. Um, found that out in high school. <laughs> Parents came home. How come the vodka's frozen? I have no idea. Um, and then obviously you have to be careful uh, how long you keep the piece of ice in here. Meaning if you have it in there for too long, the ice, uh, 
obviously melt and absorbs into the sponge, which means you can't pour in as much water because sponge absorbs it. I'm not going to go into detail about that. Uh, and the other thing is you can actually have fun with this in different party situations. It's like one of my favorite party tricks to do. Um, now I'll explain. If you ever hear a magician say you end dirty, that means you uh, don't end clean. It means something can't be examined. For example, uh, we did this trick. Now this is called ending dirty because I have a, a cup with the sponge at the bottom. So if someone has to see the cup, I'm done. But how can you get around this? So for example, uh, I will sometimes just bring a sponge to a party. Uh, I know most parties have like solo cups. I have a sponge that fits the solo cup size, goes into my back pocket. Just because I know sometimes people go like, hey, can you do a trick? If they do, I'll say, hey, let me just go like the, the bathroom quick. So I run to the bathroom, I put the sponge into my cup, I'll find a piece of ice, either, you know, put it, put it in here and I'll say, anybody have some water? I'll take my cut your watch, pour this in, boom, snap, water turns into ice. But the cool part is you can end clean. So for example, if you're going to do this, you're at a party or you know you're going to do it somewhere and you know you might have somebody who wants to look at the cup, right? You know, we have those uh, inquisitive people, <laughs> engineers, no. Uh, so what you can do is you can pour that piece of ice out and then try to situate yourself next to a garbage. So what happens is you show that magic, boom, ice cube. Now from here, you can crumble this up, right? You can squeeze it, crumble it all up and throw it into the trash. And now you're clean. Because what are the odds someone's gonna go into the trash to pull out this, this cup? Maybe, maybe if there are three sheets to the wind, they might. But other than that, they're probably not going to. So now you can end clean. So it's still you know a really easy trick, but can be super effective because you thought about it. Right? You asked a question, hey, what can I do? How can I make water turn into a piece of ice? How can I make water turn into a piece of ice? I don't know. Let me go play and see. Let me try some ice. What, what absorbs water? Sponges, paper towels, bounty, the quicker picker upper. What are some objects that can absorb? Okay, how, what's a natural way for me to pour water? Where can I pour it into? A bowl, maybe. A cup, perfect. That's where ice usually goes into. A cup, boom. So it's just playing, exploring. It's asking questions. And then it's the preparation and practice for it. Right? So now it's preparing and practicing. Okay, uh, so if I pour in too much water, I can see the water comes up here, so it's going to fall out. Okay, what's the right amount of water? That's every magic trick that we all do. I want you to think about your experience. Think about your product. How can you ask questions to make it a little bit better or to help make the customer experience a little bit better? How can you play and explore with your products? How can you even play and explore with your customers' products? How can you do this for your customers? Think about that now. Whoa, if, you're, if you can help your customers go into a different market or niche, like, yo, imagine the person with like playing cards who didn't do magic. Can you imagine the person went, yo, we should start selling these to magicians. You're like, genius, right? Think about how you might be able to take your, uh, uh, take your customers' products and try and use them in different ways, right? Taking their product, maybe going to one of your other customers and going, hey, I think you might be able to use this 10 of diamonds because you're a diamond dealer. I don't know, I'm just talking out loud, but how can you then link your customers up together? Or how can you just help them in their business? Uh, to me, just there's just so much, and to me that, that's magic too, because you're helping people, you're giving them an experience. So uh, just to wrap things up, uh, make sure you ask questions because I think that's one of the most important things, playing and exploring. And then at the end of all that, the preparation and the practice. Uh, hopefully you all got a little bit uh, from this. Hopefully you learned something. Like I said, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Uh, I'm all over. Pretty much, I think I'm the only Denny Corby online, which is actually kind of neat. I think there's a couple like Dennis's, but I'm actually Denny. Um, so if you want to find me, I would love to hear your input. Uh, if you have any nuggets that, that you took away from this, hopefully uh, somebody, each of you took away one little nugget. Uh, to me, that's what it's all about. Uh, whenever I read a book, watch a lecture or anything, I'm just looking and waiting for that one little nugget, that one little idea that might not even be great, but it sparks an interest. It sparks another idea that might go to something else. So hopefully you all got something away from this. Uh, I had absolutely so much fun doing this. Petra, Oh, thank you so much for this opportunity. Hopefully you all uh, stay with me the whole time. I appreciate it. I would go a little bit longer, but I know it's a work day. So uh, back to you. Denny, thank you. Your, your camera blacked out right as I said back to you. It came back though. It came back. <laughs> Denny, thank you so much for being with us today. Everyone give him a round of applause. Uh, we will post a link on the Petra website. You can rewatch it. You can share it with your team. You can study the tricks. 
learn something new. Um, be sure to check out PetraCoach.com and click the events tab to see all of our other upcoming webinars and guests. Um, and as always, if you have any further questions, reach out to us at info at PetraCoach.com. Hope you guys had fun. Hope you guys learned a little something. And Denny, thank you always for being with us today. My pleasure. Thank you guys so much. Bye.